single most indicative piece of headgear in the Civil War is the forage cap. This cap was worn universally. It was issued to enlisted men, but it was worn across the board by officers and enlisted men. It's a simple cap. It was based on the French styles that were found in the 1850s. Actually, it was based on a harder type of hat called a shako, which stood very tall. The variation the U.S. adopted was a soft one, which was meant to fall forward, to be used in fatigue duty, on marches. It's called a forage cap because fruit or things could be put into it as forage and carried around, although it probably wasn't used very much like this. The name stuck. This cap is known as the model 1858 forage cap, F-O-R-A-G-E. It's the cap that was issued by the Army. There are many different types of caps that were worn in the Army, but this is the standard issue cap. It has a high body with a flat cardboard top. It offers little protection from the sun, only a visor in the front, nothing on the back, nothing on the sides. The front of the cap is a painted leather band with a small brass buckle. The buckle could be released or opened up and the band then becomes a chin strap which goes beneath the hat under the wearer's chin. It was very infrequently used like this. The interior of the cap has a leather sweatband and a polished cotton lining with a small paper label on the crown. The label says size 7, number 2, U.S. Army, signifying that it is actually an issued cap. The visor is cut from leather and then painted with enamel paint to give it a shiny surface. This particular cap has been individualized. The soldier has signed his name into the tar on the brim. This cap was owned by a man named Howell Dellin, D-E-L-I-N. He was in Company G, the 88th Ohio Infantry. The 88th saw little action, but acted as camp guards at Camp Chase, Ohio, guarding Confederate prisoners. The top of the cap, this particular one is unadorned, but the top of the cap is a place where you'd find the regimental numbers or hat brass. Perhaps you would see a horn for infantry with regimental numbers and a company letter. You might even see a corps badge, peculiar shapes that were designated for individual corps, which could be affixed to the top of the hat. So in fact, this hat could be a storyboard telling you the regiment a soldier belonged to, his branch, infantry, cavalry, artillery, his company, and even his corps. Some of it was by personal choice, some of it was by regimental choice. Regimental commanders would decide how, where, or even if to place numbers or insignia on a cap. But many times there would be nothing like this cap uh, indicates here. The cap is not very waterproof or weather protective. In fact, for rain, a special cover was issued made of oilcloth that fit over the body of the hat onto these two buttons. The cap could be worn on the top of the head like this, but more frequently it was worn off on the side at a jaunty, rakish angle, which gave character to the soldier and to the hat. Many soldiers flipped the visor up on the hat and wore it in this manner, which became very stylish. It was a serviceable cap and it was very easily identified with the Civil War soldier. There were variations, though, on this cap. As I said before, this is the standard issue cap. You could privately purchase one that may have a bound visor or not quite as tall. There were other types that were called kepis. This is the kepi. It's a little shorter than the forage cap. You also can see that the top, rather than having the piping, is sunken down and the, the material is actually folded into the top. It's shorter a little more stylish. The kepi was not an issue cap per se. The forage cap was the standard issue cap. The kepi was more of a private purchase kind of cap. The interior you can see is a little more plush as well. It has a quilted top lining, uh, dark satinette lining with a leather sweatband, and also a bound visor, which, which was a better sign of quality. The kepi was more popular with the officer corps as well as wealthy soldiers who could afford it, and presented a much more 
dignified appearance, almost a European appearance because of its low size. This is a more elaborate version of the kepi, or actually a chasseur cap. A chasseur cap is a little taller than a kepi, it's very hard to discern the difference, but it's just a styling difference essentially. This particular cap has a quatrefoil embroidered on the top. It's a lace design that was sewn onto the top of the cap. Now by examining the quatrefoil and by looking at the number of strands, there are four strands here, that would indicate this cap would belong to a field rank officer, a colonel, lieutenant colonel, or a major. This cap is more of the forage cap style with the piping, the reed piping, and the flat top, the very tight flat top. This hybrid cap uh, has a bound visor, differentiating it from the cutout leather visor of the issue cap. The interior as well on this cap is quilted and has a little drawstring for tightening to make the cap a better fit. This is another variation of the forage cap. It's very tall, much taller than the standard issue cap. The visor in this one is cut very shallow in a crescent and barely covers the eyes of the wearer. This particular type is called a McDowell cap because it was General Irwin McDowell who started to wear this fashion or this type of cap and made it very popular. The tall forage cap continued only for a short time after the Civil War. It was rarely seen but continued to be in army use into the early 1870s, 1872 or so. By that time it was replaced with the kepi which stayed in American service in army uniform till the early 1900s.